Hey, what's up everyone? It's Steph from Steph Lee Films. Yes, I have been missing for two months on YouTube and I would like to sincerely apologize to my subscribers and viewers. But I still see the subscriber numbers increasing every day. So really thank you all who have stuck with me despite my absence on YouTube, continuing to post questions and comments on the channel. A couple of reasons for not posting on YouTube as much as I would like to Firstly, work outside of YouTube picked up and I was pretty busy clearing backlog. And secondly, I'm actually working on a series of ATEM Mini Extreme tutorials called Master the Extreme, which covers basic use of the ATEM Mini Extreme and how it has greatly enhanced my production work. So coming up in the next few weeks, I will be releasing videos that teach you how to use the Extreme or how I use the Extreme for my jobs sharing little tips and tricks along the way, so do stay tuned please. For those watching my videos on this channel for the first time, thank you for coming on. My name is Steph. I'm a full-time photographer and videographer here in Singapore. I run a production house and I share live stream experiences here on my channel on YouTube. So without further ado, let's dive into the first episode of Master the Extreme. So for our first episode, let's take a look at comparing the Extreme with its predecessor, the A10 Mini Pro. I won't be going into technical details between the two as by now there should be many other videos on YouTube making that comparison. Instead, I will focus on what are the key differences so far that I personally have experienced on my live stream jobs that I find very useful and I will share those pointers with you instead. These improvements are immediate, meaning to say if last week you are using the A10 Mini Pro and you have upgraded to the A10 Mini Extreme this week, and bam, doing the same setup, you immediately get an upgrade in terms of production quality and efficiency during your live stream productions. So for myself, I will be using both ISO models for comparison, which is the A10 Mini Pro ISO, as well as the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. So first up, the inputs. 4 inputs versus 8 inputs, I guess this is the most obvious difference between the two. They say less is more, but in this context, more is definitely better. So typically for my live stream setups, I usually have at least 3 cameras connected to the A10 Mini, which I connect to inputs 1, 2 and 3. The fourth input is for the spare laptop to play slideshows, videos, uh, keynote and any other possible media based on your requirements or your client's requirements. That effectively uses up all the input ports on the A10 Mini Pro. Okay, as you know, by now I run a lot of wedding live streams. So for myself, a typical example of a wedding day live stream runs such that the live stream will show the photo montage, then a video of family and friends with their well wishes, and then you cut the scene to show the couple marching in when the live stream begins. So what happens is between the slideshow and the video, there is that end of slideshow pause and you have to mouse and hover to the other video and click play. Not so smooth, especially if you want to showcase your high production quality because the online guests will be able to see your mouse moving around. But you don't have a choice because you're only left with input 4. However, for the extreme model, now you have an extra 4 inputs which you can connect a second spare laptop or an iPad to input 5. So once your photo slideshow finishes playing on input 4, you can cut to input 5 and play the video. Smooth. This for me is very useful and makes the online viewing experience super smooth and professional. So the second difference is the inclusion of the headphone monitoring jack. When I was using the Mini Pro, I monitored sound by using a display monitor for the HDMI out with an aux jack. That was always a workaround, but I was always that nervous on this because when a setup is done on site and when you test the sound and the sound is not coming into the stream, I've always wondered if it was the connection between the display monitor aux jack or was there really a problem with the audio feed coming in from the venue's mixer? So now that the A10 Mini Extreme has a built-in headphone jack, I no longer have to rely on the sound coming from the display monitor. Any sound that comes into the Extreme 
will be the sound coming in from the venue's mixer. So the third difference is the addition of another USB-C port. So for live streams that I run with Zoom, Microsoft Teams, BlueJeans, or basically any other platform that requires me to use the A10 Mini as a webcam instead of streaming directly, the USB-C port is always used up because on the Mini Pro, there's only one. So meaning to say, if I need a recording, it will have to be downloaded from the platform app itself. And this usually is of a pretty low quality. So when I'm pitching for live stream jobs to clients, I'm actually pretty hesitant when the client wants to use these meeting platforms and they want to do a recording. So either I will have to record through the app or use an external program such as OBS. But now for the extreme, with a second USB-C port, it relieves me of this worry because anytime the client says, Steph, can we do Zoom? Sure. Would you be able to record the session? Sure. Will it be in high definition or high resolution? Of course. So the fourth and last difference is the addition of an extra HDMI out. You know, for most of my wedding live stream, I also get the hotel managers asking, Steph, can you do an output from your setup to my projector? Well, I mean, of course you could. There's the streaming bridge and there's an option of doing a HDMI splitter. But the splitter will see uh, the same view as it is on your monitor, which is usually the multi-view. And of course, there are a few other workarounds, but usually I'll say, sorry, it cannot be done because that will really make things complicated. But now the Xtreme has two HDMI outputs, where one of them can be your multi-view and the other is the program view. And you can fit this HDMI out program view to the projector at the venue, which is what the physical audience wants to see. So I say, yes, sure. Take this output and connect it to your projector. Instantly, the physical guests are able to see what's happening on the live stream real time. So there you have it. Four instant upgrades when you change from the Mini Pro to the Xtreme. Well, at least for me though. Of course, these examples are just my personal experiences. But if you have any of your own, do share them with me or other viewers in the comments below so that we can all learn from your experience as well. So this is the start of the Master the Extreme series of videos and coming up in the next few weeks, I will be talking about more advanced features in the Extreme, such as learning how to use the four chromas, how to use the new super source, using the two downstream keys and many more. The ATM Mini Extreme is such a brilliant device that if you are doing live stream, honestly, you should seriously consider getting this. Or if you already own the Mini Pro, do consider doing an upgrade. Before I end this video, I'd like to say it really means a lot to me if you found any of the information I've shared today useful and if you can give this video a like. So it encourages me to continue making such videos for you. If not, feel free to leave them in the comments below so I can work on my future video content to bring you something that you like or that you want to see. If you want to learn more about photography and videography or get the latest updates on live streaming products from Blackmagic Design or learn tutorials on how to master the extreme like this episode, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And of course, since you're here, do check out two of my other videos here. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.